Today, you gear nerds are in luck because I'm going to show you what's in my bag. I'm Lindsay Adler. I'm a portrait and commercial photographer. Today, I want to take you through the essential tools that I need to get the job done. I'm going to show you everything from lenses to hard drives to other essentials that I bring with me everywhere I go. I'm also going to show you the differences for how I pack my bag when I'm going on location, like outdoors to shoot or shooting in the studio. All right, so we're actually going to begin with the bag itself. I shoot with a Temba Axis 20L backpack. So there's a couple of reasons that I like this backpack. First of all, if I am traveling to go shoot somewhere, a lot of times I'm renting a lot of my big gear, so I don't need to carry a lot of stuff. Instead, I'm carrying more of the essentials. I wanna keep it pretty lightweight. I also like this because it has lots of compartments, but not too many. I found that it's just a really good balance. I can also access the camera from the top without having to unzip the entire bag. There is another entry point on the side if I want to have a secondary favorite lens that I want to be able to access here, or I can open up the entire bag, which is where I can keep my laptop and the remainder of my gear. Also in this quick pocket up top, this is where I keep things like cards and batteries and other things that I'm going to need to constantly access. So this is the bag that I take with me everywhere that I go. And so what I wanna do is I wanna show you first the essentials of the things that I take on every single shoot, and then we'll look at the differences between studio and location. All right, so let's start at the very beginnings with the essentials that I take no matter what shoot I am doing. And of course, that begins with the camera. This is the Canon R5, and this is the camera I use for everything I shoot. Portraits, editorials, commercial shoots, you name it. Um, I love this camera because it's a fantastic mirrorless camera. The lenses are fantastic. Uh, great focus, exposure simulation, all that and more. Now, if I am going someplace further afield, like I am traveling, I will probably take two camera bodies with me so that I have an extra one as a backup because you never wanna be stuck on an important job and just have a problem that you can't solve. So we're just going to begin with this. And I usually put the camera with whatever lens I plan on using most often in this top area. We're gonna talk about lenses in a bit. Next up is whenever I shoot, no matter if I'm outdoors, if I'm shooting in a studio, you name it, I'm always shooting tethered. And so I need to bring with me my tether cables. This is another example of where I bring more than one. I always bring a backup because it, tethering is so important because I want to be able to check my focus, my exposure, but even more important than that, I want the client, the subject, to be able to see the images. So this allows me to shoot so that the images are coming up on my computer as I am shooting. So I always bring more than one. Now the upgrade that I've made recently is I actually have a tether cable and what they call a pigtail. So how this works is this peach uh, attaches to the camera itself and then it uh, plugs into this extension, which is the main cable. And then it allows me to quickly detach if I don't want to have a really long cable, you know, especially if I'm going outdoors and I, I just want to run across the field to be able to scout a new location. So I've been using this more often because it gives me a little bit more portability. Now related to tethering, I've got my main cable, the part that attaches to my camera, but this is also super essential. This is called a tether block. The tether block is what attaches the cable to the bottom of the camera. This is really important because it maintains a steady connection of the cable to the port on the side of the camera. So it makes sure that as I'm shooting, the images are coming in, I'm not losing that connection. So 100% of the time, I take these cables and a tether block. I usually put the tether block up top and I also will put several extra batteries in that top pocket. The tether cables, however, and like I said, I take multiple, I usually put in the front pouch. So I'm gonna actually put it up front here. Next up, I have a few other accessories. For example, let's talk about memory cards. Because I'm shooting tethered, a majority of the time, I don't even need a memory card, but in the example where I'm going to be scouting someplace and I don't wanna to have to take my computer or be tethered, this one has a write speed of 200 megabytes per second. So I'm using the SanDisk card. I usually just throw a couple in the top here as a backup. It's not what I'm using a majority of the time. 
Next down the line is I definitely need a hard drive or two. This is the one that I've become obsessed with recently. And by the way, the link to all of this gear is in the description below. The reason I love this is it's so small. Uh, it is a solid state drive and I can get it in one or two terabytes. So I usually take a couple of these. So I have a main one and a backup. Also can put this in the top or the front of the pouch. Okay, next up for commercial shoots, I am pretty much always taking a color checker. This is going to allow me to make sure that I have a neutral reference point in my images. So at the beginning of the session, once I get the lighting all sorted out, we take a picture of this color checker, and then later on in post-processing, I can use this to make sure I have the right white balance. So you can kind of tuck that anywhere in the scene. I always shoot pro photo, so I usually bring a trigger or two. This one is the newest one that you can actually see the powers of the strobes, what they're set at on this digital display. Okay, so a couple more things in the accessories category. Um, I usually bring this, which is filled with different filters. You can see that it says main kit because I have dozens and dozens of filters. Uh, but within this, I'll have essential tools like a black pro mist or for creative shoots, I have a star filter. I'll have something like a polarizer. So I usually bring this kit because it gives me flexibility to, to add a little bit of my style regardless of the shoot. Then nothing to do with photography. I've got the Mac Russian red lipstick because sometimes you just need to quickly dress up and look like you put in some effort. So a lipstick can be helpful and I'll probably just stick that in the front. And then one more thing, this is a tool that I usually only take if I plan on being outdoors, shooting on location for an extended period of time. And this is a power bank that I can use to quickly charge my laptop or have a backup for my laptop. So it's nice because it's lightweight, it can fit easily in the bag, but I don't take that if I'm shooting in the studio. Most of the time when I shoot, I'm not, uh, I'm not, far away from a power source for a very long period of time. So this is going to be more than enough to make sure that I don't unexpectedly have my computer die. So now that we've talked about these essentials, let's get on to the stuff that everyone geeks out about, which would be lenses. So the lenses that I take if I'm going outdoors versus shooting in a studio are different. But as a gear nerd, I own them all. And of course, if you're traveling, you don't wanna to have to take this much gear. Most of the time for commercial work, I'm traveling to a city where we could always rent lenses. For commercial shoots, they're also typically a budget to rent this gear, which also can be quite convenient if I don't wanna carry a lot of stuff. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack my bag as if I am going to LA and I have a commercial shoot in a studio there. All right, so first and foremost, the lens that I use most often is the Canon 24 to 105 lens. The reason I use this most often is because it gives me a wide coverage of focal lengths in one lens, so it doesn't slow me down. I don't need to constantly change lenses. I don't need a second body with a different lens. I use this all the time. Now, this is a 4.0 lens. And so when I'm shooting in the studio, most of the time I'm not shooting a wider aperture than that, so this is more than sufficient. I could select a different lens, like a 24 to 72.8, if I know there's a reason I need to blur out the background or creatively, I need a narrow depth of field. But for most of my commercial work in the studio, this is my go-to lens. So let me add that to the camera because I usually connect them for travel as well. Next up, I have my long lens, which is the Canon RF 70 to 200 2.8. And by the way, the 24 to 105 is also an RF lens. These are the lenses that are the newest in Canon's line that are made for their mirrorless cameras. So I grabbed the uh, 70 to 200 for a couple of reasons. It's great for tight head and shoulder shots. It's also nice if I really need to compress a scene dramatically. And so I usually put that on the quick access pocket on the side of the bag because then I can kind of grab it out without having to open up the entire backpack. Those two lenses are all I really need for a majority of my commercial work if it is just in the studio, if we're not also going on location. So let me now have a quick aside of what additional pieces I would take if I'm going to be shooting outside. All right, so first of all, I would likely, instead of having the 24 to 105, I'd likely swap out to the 24 to 70. The reason I like this lens is it's actually a little bit sharper than the 24 to 105, and it is a 2.8 lens, which gives me that flexibility for a narrow depth of field. So if I think I'm shooting a commercial job where maybe it's a couple groups of people, I'm shooting on location, I want that narrow depth of field, 
I might still pack that. Even if I'm mostly shooting in the studio, I might still take that with me. Um, but if I am mostly shooting on location, I'll 100% take that lens. So we're gonna pack it with us today uh, so that I have that 2.8 in the wider focal lengths. All right, next down the line is if I'm going to be shooting mostly on location, I definitely grab my RF 85 millimeter 1.2. This has a gorgeous compression, a gorgeous narrow depth of field. Uh, it's great for tight shots, uh, even wider shots if I just really wanna see the background melt away. So I'm pretty much always taking the 85 if I'm shooting on location. And then of course, many photographers favorite must have location lens, which is a nifty 50, a 50 millimeter. This one is the RF 50 millimeter 1.2. I have found that with commercial lifestyle work, when I'm shooting outdoors, this is probably the lens that I use most often. So if I had to cut a lens, I would choose the 50 over the 85 for the type of commercial work that I do. And then I'd stick with my 24 to 70 to cover a little bit of the longer uh, range with a narrow depth of field. But for this shoot, we're going to be in the studio so I don't need to pack that in the bag today. Last but not least is my laptop, because of course I told you that I always shoot tethered and I, know I need to be able to work on the road. This is one of the newer laptops. This is uh, one of the, the M1s and I always invest and try to upgrade in my laptops because if I'm shooting and I'm shooting tethered, I need it to quickly bring in and process those files. So that slips into the laptop sleeve over here. All right, so if you look in the bag now, there's actually a few more empty spaces. There's room for more gear. And the reason I do this is because these are just the essentials, but every job is different. Maybe I need a, a different lens. I need another backup camera body. Um, who knows, maybe I need a light meter on certain jobs. If I need to be able to reproduce a setup multiple times, I'm shooting part of it here in New York, the other part in LA, then I'll want to add a light meter. So these are the types of tools that I bring for every job. And then I cater it to each individual job if I need extra tools. All right, so there you have it, a look inside my bag. Now I have shared with you a lot of different gear. And so if you wanna check that out, you can take a look in the description below because I have links for you there. And of course, you can visit adorama.com. I encourage you guys to like, subscribe, and be sure to stay tuned for more videos because I am constantly sharing everything from my tools to my favorite lighting techniques to business techniques and more. See you next time, guys.